Hello, screenwriters, and welcome to Writing for Screens, the screenwriting step-by-step -step project, episode 148. My name is Glenn Gers. Oh, lost our camera again. Uh, my name is Glenn Gers, and I come to you every Monday through Friday, if I can make it, at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time um, to take you through my process of writing a script. What am I? Yeah, yeah, that's the, no. All right, sorry about that. Uh, camera's acting up. Um, take you through my process of writing a script, let you share my screen, uh, look over my shoulder as I write in order to demystify the process. Try to show you a little bit um, about the step-by-step, line-by-line uh, work that it takes. I'm not talking about what makes a great script. I'm not talking about how to sell a script. I am talking about the ability to just get it written because <laughs> no matter how great your concept is, how fabulous your story theory is, if you can't actually write it and have somebody read it, it's not going to work. So, this is not the best process, it's not the only process, it is simply the way that I've worked out in a 25-year career writing TV and movies. Um, uh, I had to teach myself. There was no YouTube when I started, there were not even very many books, so I had to figure this out for myself, and now that I'm on the closing end of my career, I thought, hey, let me tell people what I figured out in case it is useful to you when you are looking at the blank page. If it's helpful, take pieces of it. If it's not, don't worry. It's not important. Figure out your way to do things. Um, that's really the key to being any kind of artist. You've got to look at all the information you can find and then figure out what's good for you. All right. Hi, Jean. Um, I am going to take a second here to try and figure out why why the camera was not was not treating me right. Hey, yeah, um, and and I don't know why, um, but it's not important because we're back. We're on. We are we are crystal clear. Um, I it just made me fumble my intro, and you know what? That's okay because what we're really here for is the writing. So let's get to it. Hello, N. You've got the time right. We are good. <laughs> good to see you. Uh, welcome, all you regulars. We are, for those of you who are watching uh, for the first time, uh, we are cutting. Uh, I had a 94-page draft of a script that was supposed to be 60 pages. If you go by a minute a page and it's an hour-long drama, so uh, that's because I had just wrote whatever I could possibly think of in the rough draft. You don't want to censor yourself during the rough draft. You want to just get everything you can down because then you can look at it and say, oh, well, that's a waste of time. I, I said that twice. And then you begin to find the script in the rough draft after you outline if you believe in what I say. Hello, or Ace Aristocrat. <laughs> Hello, 99 Precinct. I haven't seen you in a while. Hello, Maratelitoso. Um, good to see all of you. Yes. It's better now. We're all better. We're all good. Um, so cutting. Let's just get back to cutting because we've gotten down to 80 pages. All right. That is is with... <laughs> uh, Jean is on the Javier Margarita parade. Uh, I, I need one too, actually. Uh, so cutting, cutting. The main thing is just to get rid of excess... Words, phrases, sentences, little beats that don't actually go where I want to go. Hello, Larry. Um, the thing is, sometimes you have to try something out to see what it gives you and what it doesn't. Then later, in the clarity of time, you figure out, no, I, this, is, this is unnecessary. So... Um, All right, so this is where we left off. Uh, I'm gonna call them the crime crackers.
Uh, all right. Let's just put that, put this all together. I don't think we need to say in the windows, it's a Zoom call. We know that. Um, um, yes, indeed, sculpting and refining it is right. Although I do want to say, uh, this is this is this mythology that you are carving it the way uh, a sculptor carves marble. Famously, supposedly, you chip away until you find the shape of it. That's not actually, in my experience, how it works. Because the truth is, there is not a finished form waiting. There is not the right version waiting to be carved away at. Um, when you have that feeling, you're not making choices. You're not saying, no, I'm going to move the arm over here, or I'm going to put the face that way. And that's actually how you sculpt a story, because with every change you make, you change its final shape. And especially important for people who are working professionally, because you will be asked to move the arm all over the place and try different things. And people will say, no, what about no arms and stuff like that? So you need to be able to conceive of this work as something that is being found during the process of trying out different things. If you are looking at it as, and, and I can tell you this because this is how I used to think about it. I used to get into big fights with people in, in jobs and get fired because I would be like, no, we figured out the right way. Now you can't change it. And that's not how the job goes. Um, well, Larry, you are going to be quizzed, so be sure you've got all the details right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. After I finished the rough draft, one of the things I did was I chose Crime Crackers as not only the name of the group, but the name of the script. Um, and indeed, hello, Gerardo, and hello, Phil J. So 50 pages is the guideline, but what is not acceptable for a one hour show, uh, anything over <laughs> 60 pages. Uh, I mean, obviously, if you go to 62 or three and you are a professional and they can see that you have jammed in everything you, you, you couldn't really cut more, they'll let it go. But generally, honestly, like 55 to 60 is preferable because remember, <laughs> scripts expand after writing. When you write a script, if you write 120 pages, it's going to film at two and a half hours. So therefore, underwrite, write for less time than you, the thing is supposed to be. Um, yes, exactly. You're finding, you're making the shape you like. That's how I, I like to think about it. Um, did that answer your question, Phil? Um, let me know. What can we do to help? That's good. Just so you know, if you're still in, am I? What do you think? Am I insane? Should I? Well, those are actually two. Those are actually. So one of the things that happens is when I read something out loud, sometimes I read it differently than it's actually written, and I take that seriously because you'll find that with actors too. Sometimes they'll just say it, and, and it'll have a different flow, um, and it's not right or wrong. You know, there's different people will say things different ways. Well, those are actually two separate questions, but the answer to both is yes. <laughs> Hell yes. Yes, a minute per page. That is the industry standard estimate. Hi, Matthew. Um, uh, it isn't actually accurate, but it is the industry standard. So everyone in the industry who reads a script, if you hand in a 70-page script for a two-hour movie, they're going to go, that's not right even though it could be. And likewise, if you write a 160-page script, they're going to say that's way too long, and actually it probably is. Uh, yeah, 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 okay. All right, let's see. I'm in with one condition. I'm going to... That we're in on the 
in on the money too yeah what money <laughs> it's kind of disingenuous you catch this fella your podcast gonna hit the big time get a, a book book deal hbo series you're famous and making money because i risked my life <laughs> uh i know how that's supposed to be said i don't know if that's yeah okay sure you know what if there's money and we're not dead you can have some okay you all heard that now i feel dirty <laughs> i guess you can afford your feet i guess you i guess you can afford your feet see this is what i mean Really? We can hear you. <laughs> there you go. That's all we need. Okay. All right. Everyone looks... Everyone looks at the open doorway, um, and then I have like this looks, looks, looks. So then they can't be looking at the open doorway. So let's get rid of that. I don't think we need this. There we go. Hello, Natasha. Did you write two more scripts since I last talked to you yesterday? <laughs> Uh, Natasha, Natasha is incredibly hardworking and prolific uh, and impressive. And so uh, I just every time she comes on, she's done another reading or, or, or written another script. And I, my jaw just drops because I'm still working on this one. And it's ridiculous how much more she's gotten done than me. So I am I'm just impressed. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. No, he's not going to get it. <laughs> no. Your house now. <laughs> your house now. I don't think that's Norman, though. Ah, let's, I don't know. Let's, let me think of this. Hello, Eddie. Uh, I hope that is how you pronounce it. Damn. Um, hi, welcome. Glad that you're here. A new name. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yes. Hmm, this is an interesting question. Yes, quantity is not a guarantee of quality. However, I have it on good authority. Uh, first of all, she keeps getting people to read it and comment well on it. And plus, um, we've even had people share scripts among our uh, uh, regulars, and and the the word is good. The word is that 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 Natasha can not just type. But right. Um, all right. Let me see. See, this is actually going a little fast. We can hear you. Actually, you know what? This is not we can hear you. This is doing this. You're doing this right here. You're doing this. You're doing this here. Really? You're doing this here.
Actually, it doesn't keep ringing. Ring this again. Hmm. <laughs> See, I told you. Today I did a reading with practicing directors. Excellent. They like my short uh, uh, enough to ask me back again. Said it's the most complicated, not in a boat bad way they've ever done as it has five characters excellent five is workable you can do a short with five characters it's just a question of money um, if you're paying them but most shorts you don't pay so cool does it tackle 60s racism racism set in the 1960s because that costs money um, but cool you never know there's also other, there are ways to do things there are ways um, especially now that that post has become so uh, cool, and you can do all sorts of film processing. Um, yes, it is great to hear. Congratulations. I just love how Natasha keeps making things happen for herself, keeps trying things. That's the key. You can't control the outcome, but you can control that you keep creating and trying. That's what you can control, and that is what powers an actual writer. You should go. Well, I'm not go now. <laughs> Yeah, any connections. Honestly, the thing about connections is you never, like, yes, it's always cool to reach up to the, the, the teeny tiny bottleneck where the famous people are, but the truth is uh, they're inundated, they are difficult, they are uh, just, the best thing you can do is make a lot of connections around you. Because those people are all branching out and doing things, and and it's uh, always try for the the top, sure. But making connections to other people who are working and trying and creating—that's actually where most of the exciting things happen for people's careers. Because somebody else that you meet who's sort of at your level, they are like, "Hey, I got this opportunity. Come along," and th those things can lead to stuff. Anyway. Uh, Okay, it does not matter where the handset is. Okay. Doesn't have to be a small New England coastal town. A coastal town suggests small. Little fishing boats, not necessary, just fishing boats. Fishing boats at a dock, a row of local shops and restaurants. And 
old buoy. Uh, bobbing in the water. Yes, I, I, <laughs> I emphasize that to say, why do you have that? Clangs now and then, seagulls cry. Let's make this uh, one thing. OK. If we don't care, there we go. Look at that. <laughs> now we just got boom, boom, boom. We got some cliches. We got some some picturesqueness, and we're done. Um, Workmanlike, but artsy. I don't think artsy. I think just workmanlike. Denim. Where's workman? Okay. I can I can hear bird seagulls. They're not in a I can hear bird seagulls. So you're not in a So you're not a robocall. A robocall. There we go. Yes, indeed. I like this little bit, but he can't yet, but she can't yet. I'm trying to suggest a connection and also just make it fun to read. Uh, trying to call George Roisman. All right, let me read through this because I don't know where we are. Uh, you're trying to reach. No. <laughs> uh, who am I speaking with? George's widow, ex-widow. Ah, this is George's widow. No. No. Who am I speaking with? This is George's widow, ex-widow. Yeah, I think we could just. Uh, da -da -da. I'm going to take this out. They'll figure out. Ex widow. We can use this. I just want to say I didn't do it. They already had the attention.
Hmm. I like suggesting pause. I mean, like the fact is there's a pause here. Uh, why is the who underlined? Because of the emphasis um, that I wanted to suggest when she says, thank you. Who is this? That wouldn't be it. It's like, who is this? I was trying to emphasize the who um, because there's a, that's a specific way of saying like, all right, who is this? It, you know, um, it's just a little tweak for the actor. Not important, but uh, that's why. Hey, Maria, I haven't seen you. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Arizona. I didn't realize that. Uh, so sorry. Uh, I know that, that uh, you know, when you pick your times, the, the, the time zones ripple out <laughs> and you never know who you're keeping up late at night and who is still at work. It's great to see you, Maria. Thank you for coming. I'm so glad you're here. We are cutting. We are cutting in the last last part of the script right now. All right, so we had they move closer. So let's just take that out because Uh, yeah, I mean that's it's that's an indispensable flourish, <laughs> an indispensable, indefensible. It is an ind. I cannot say it's right or wrong. This is the thing about writing scripts. Um, you, you try and flavor it with your own voices and visions uh, in such a way that it's not like stopping it to say, oh, you got to do it this way. But at the same time, just giving it a little, a little character pizzazz hmm. their jaws drop is not clear Uh, <laughs> good. I'm gl I'm glad. I Mar Maria works as hard as Natasha. I got I got some hardworking folks out there. Uh, Maria runs a gaming company, writes scripts all of on her own, and is actually trying to uh, work out a production of her own scripts. She's just working. Uh, I'm amazed you have time to, to think about this at all. Um, she is now. Yeah, I've heard Arizona is in this little pocket of its own time, which must be really difficult if you're driving near there. <laughs> um so would I tell us? Yes, yes. Okay, this is <laughs> also hello, Malika. <laughs> um, this is just this is this is boy. This is getting into the the Glenger's weeds here of of facts. But I I like that I know them, so I'm going to tell you. Um, the deal with underlining is this: underline you underline to emphasize, um, and the reason you do that is because when they originally made typewriters. There were no italics. You could not italicize a word in on a, with a typewriter. So there was a set of proofreader's marks in developed for publishing, which meant that certain things meant certain things. And one of the things was, if you wanted italics, you underlined it. And they knew that means when we print this, this will be italics. So therefore, underlining and italics kind of mean the same thing. Um, but old school, old style uh, typewriters required. There was no bold. There was no italics. There was so much there was not. Uh, so that's why underlining and italics are the same thing. Uh, the long answer to yes, to show emphasis. That is exactly right. Um, how many do I usually plan on? 200. <laughs> uh, I, I cannot even conceive of how many times I go through a script. Um, 
uh, it's literally endless. There is, you never actually finish a script. You constantly are going over it. Every time you show it to someone, they give you notes, you make tweaks. Uh, so the answer is, um, I am I am thinking, I mean, in this particular case, I'll probably do another run or two. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take, frankly, take this as far as I would if I were actually submitting it for producers and things, um, because this is an educational script. This is an educational program. Um, so that's the plan. The plan is I'll probably, I definitely need to do another draft. Um, and then I'll probably do the same process of running through it once or twice more after that. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, moved into pre-production and re received three auditions. Whoa, that is so cool. All right. Um, cursive typewriters. Yes. Well, that's the thing. The famous selector, to get back into our, our typewriter nerding out, uh, one of the things that did happen when they invented the IBM Selectric typewriter was these type balls. You should Google this thing if you want to see what I'm talking about. Um, or they're actually all over uh, the movie Seven. You can actually see them on the desks there. Um, but instead of type keys going, chick, 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 there was a little ball that would swivel and all the letters were written. It was like a little planet of letters. And the planet of letters would come and slam against the uh, the the page and you could take those off. You could detach them and put different type faces and type sizes. Uh, and, and so therefore, but honestly, who's going to stop and like italicize one word, change the type ball and then put the other one? You don't do that. If you were doing a whole section of a script in italics, you might, if you were really into that. Okay. Yes, indeed. It is quite like stuff like that. I do find interesting. Um, yes, yes. Then, then I will talk about, once this script is done, I will talk about how I would try to present it, pitch it, prepare the, the pitch documents and the pitch psychology and notes. Yes, let's, we will definitely talk that. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what I today I learned actors will take liberties with the lines. Yes, the scripts. This is a fact. Get used to it. Some are more aggressive about it than others. Um, uh, do not never ever assume that the people are going to say the words exactly as you write them. They're not. They're going to drop words. They're going to add words. They're going to sometimes rearrange whole sentences. Actually pay attention to that because sometimes they are talking there they are expressing the way the words flow when you speak them as opposed to when you read them but sometimes they're just that's who they are and they they need to kind of muscle their way into the character and so one way to do that is to not be overly precious with the words also some of them it's like a way to be not judged <laughs> so they'll deliberately not be too careful with the lines because they're like don't bother me with those lines, things I'm acting here. Uh, but you know what? Even then, you got to let them do what they got to do. Uh, if you are directing, you have to sort of set your priorities for how important it is to you to get things ex said exactly as like. And I can tell you that can become a real headbutting problem, which I do not recommend you take an extreme form of. There are famously certain showrunners who have said like you must say exactly the words and punctuation as written and they will add time on the set to make people do it it can make for some awkward bad acting actually um anyway all right let's see because now we've got another question from joseph joseph or joseph depending on how you pronounce it? <laughs> Would you write a script that primarily features one character? Um, 
I wouldn't recommend it. I would, I mean, if you have a great story that you can structure that way, it's a cool thing to do, but it's hard. It's hard to maintain your interest. There are famously certain scripts, none of which I have seen, but I know that there's the, the one with Ryan Reynolds buried in a box, <laughs> uh, I think called Buried. And there's one that my son tells me is actually pretty good with John Cena playing a soldier who's, I think it's called The Wall. And he's in the Middle East and he's a soldier and he's caught behind a wall, like a little wall, just, and he and another, uh, an opposing soldier is caught behind uh, uh, some kind of protective structure. And the entire movie is these two guys in this battlefield where they can't leave their position. Uh, I've heard it's good. Anyway, the answer is if you can do it, if you can find a way, and there are ways, including flashbacks, as you said, Famously, 127 Hours, um, the the Roddy Doyle film with James Franco. Um, but uh, it depends. It depends on what the story is and how you plan to tell it. Um, also, are you doing things like voiceover? If you're doing voiceover, sure. Why not? Um, I mean, there are plays, one person plays. Uh, it depends. Uh, or, or likewise, famously, um, Spalding Gray, Steven Soderbergh did a play of his one man show in which he just did the show. Um, cool. Uh, Memento does not have that. Memento has plenty of people. That's got five or six. Uh, it's got four or five main characters plus some some extra characters. Uh, yes, I would say you you should be worried about that. That is that is actually the problem. I would say unless you have a strong reason to do it, don't do it. Add characters. What what's the problem with adding characters? Why not have other people in the world? Um, they would have to be in some form of, if you're doing one character, then either they're in an extreme situation, like in 127 hours where the guy's stuck, uh, his, a boulder has fallen on his arm and he's trapped in a canyon, so there aren't any other people, that's the whole point of the story, um, or this person has a personal situation in which they are uncomfortable or separated from other people or for whatever reason, and that's, sure, it's interesting, um, if it's just a person in a room, uh, study theater. It's not uh, It's not impossible to do, but you, you're going to have to think about why drama in, is almost always about the relationships of characters. So who is your one character having a relationship with? A, you can have a character have a relationship to the audience. In other words, they are telling the audience a story. That works perfectly well. Um, especially on stage, but it, but it can work with screens. Um, uh, sometimes liberties. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That is absolutely right. Um, if, if you're writing comedy, sometimes the, you know, the, the punchline needs to be at the end of the line and so you'll just mess up the rhythm. Um, but other times, the way people say things, the improv is, is important. <sighs> okay. Um, it's not really channeling. Uh, it's more of not being overly conscious. It's like when you tell an actor you have to stand exactly here and turn exactly this way because the light's going to hit you. You're making it harder for them to behave naturally. Um, it takes a village um, a plus a video village to make a film. That's a joke about the fact that the place where you watch the monitors to see what's being recorded is called video village. Okay. Um it is feasible. Uh, think about think about why you're doing it. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have famously had some actors come to me and just say, "Hey, get ready. I do not remember the lines. I do not stick to the lines. It it gets in the way of my acting." And I'm like, "Okay, I wasn't a director. <laughs> Whatever." Um, now and then they would drop things that were actual plot points, and then we'd be like, "Hey, kind of have to say that one." Um, yeah, oh gosh, that's right. Lock with Tom Hardy. That's amazing. And it's was one person driving in a car. That's the whole thing. He gets in the car. You watch him for an hour and a half drive as he, he, he is admittedly doing phone calls. So it's not like there's no one to have relationships with. And you are hearing, I believe, both sides of the phone call because it's on speaker because he's driving. So technically, there are other characters. Um, but Locke is definitely something you should take a look at. Um, Friends, Joey's character was killed. That's how he said lines. Um, 
Yes, yes. That they sometimes you'll you'll kill a character. Um, yes, uh, certain like I said, t- certain shows famously um, L.A. Law and uh, NYPD Blue. Uh, th- there's certain showrunners who were like. Don't mess with our lines. Um, I got to tell you, actors and directors did not like those showrunners. <laughs> I mean, they, they liked them for other reasons, but but they were like, man, you are making our job awkward. Um, meanwhile, Bruce says, edit of my novel, 104,000 words. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, congratulations. Go. That's great. Um Yes, exactly. Hello, Aaron. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, build small steps. Small steps. A short, a short term. Uh, a short is great. Uh, small crew. Uh, the the hard thing about DIY and small crew, especially in high school and college, uh, and people starting out, uh, they don't stick around. Uh, so yeah, try and keep your crew, crew like you can do it with like a three or four person crew, um, especially now with technology the way it is. You truly can, de- depending on your shooting concept, you can shoot with three or four people easily. I, I did my whole movie just figured most of the time the crew was only six people and that was two cameras. Um, so you can do it. Um, and I advise it. I advise um, explore it. Try it. Also, your your one person thing. uh it's cool. At least make sure you get an actor who can show up all the time. The problem with people who are not getting paid and and shoots that don't just like hire someone and say, you can't work for the next three weeks because you're doing my thing, is other stuff comes up and they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I got to go. I got I got something else to do. Um, all right. So I remember I'm cutting. All right. Cases. Not trying to focus, focusing. Cutting, cutting, cutting. And you're calling to tell me that you didn't do it, that you didn't do it. Hmm. Look, I just heard about this on the news, and I want you. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. At I had nothing, and I want. I'm sh- and I'm shocked. I just heard about the. I just, and I want you to know, I had nothing to do with this stuff. I just, I just heard about this on the news, and I want you to know, I had nothing to do with it. I stopped a long time ago. I haven't done anything in years. I stopped a long time ago. 
I haven't done anything. Do we need that? This is unnecessary. Taking my private life, my issues, and using them, and using them. That's it. Um, all right, boom, boom. So that's, I just heard it, so there's an end. Using them, and it hurt, I, and it just felt because it just felt unfair. Someone is taking my private issues and using them, and using them. Okay, so all of this is what happens after he heard the news. hurt. I don't know why, because, because it just felt unfair. Someone is taking my private issues and using them. But I want you to know, I just want you to know, I had nothing to do with this. There we go. Uh, I stopped a long time. I haven't done anything. Stopped I had a long time ago. I haven't done anything. All right. All right, that's better. Not necessarily shorter, but better. Let's see what's going on here. Let's see what's going on here. Okay. Um, I had about eight people helping for the ten minute. I mean, for thirty to fifty minutes. Well, that's cool. These, that's all good. You should, you should definitely. It, it is so possible. It is so within reach. If you take small steps and you learn as you go, learn about what you're doing, um, and build. Uh, it's, it's better to do 10 projects and, and build slowly a new skill, each one, um, than to try and get one big deal calling card thing. That's, that's something that, that people in the business, they're thinking, what, what do we want to see? And they, and they say, like, this is a calling card. Just do the best work you can with what you've got. Learn about DIY. Learn about the, the art of, of what you can do with what you have. Um, and uh, ask your friends for help. Yeah, in high school, especially, the problem is, are they reliable? Can they can they help? Um, keep it short to 40 minutes uh, or less. Good advice. Maria is making a point uh, that 40 minutes or less is the time for uh, things like film festivals, Academy Awards, Nichols, and other contests. So therefore, yeah, if you can, learn stuff like that. That is useful. Um <laughs> Maria's got a point, and that's with it. It's including its actual runtime, including everything. Yes, absolutely. Thirty pages of one character is very doable if you have some 
story <laughs> that, that the person is involved with. Absolutely doable. That's a one act play and that is doable. Um, yeah, try it. Try it and see. It, by the way, don't shoot it until you got the script. And in, you have, it doesn't cost anything to make a script. It doesn't cost anything but time. And once you've made those choices, those decisions in the script, then you worry about production. Then you figure out uh, all the things that you're going to have to deal with. But think about your production while you're writing it. But I'm saying you don't. It, you can infinitely figure solve problems in the script. You can infinitely solve your production plan in the script. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, that that <laughs> this is interesting. Yes. Thank you. I, I'm so glad that you that you liked it. Um, Co-writing. Let's let's talk because I'm um, I'm going to be. Let's let's get out of this now because we're we're winding down. Here is the deal about co-writing. Uh, the Writers Guild is a very specific set of rules. The the credits on any Hollywood movie are determined by the Writers Guild Union. They are not determined by the studios, the companies, or the networks or anything else. They are all credits are determined by the Writers Guild. And what happens is. Uh, since very often they hire more than one writer on a project. Um, sometimes they hire them all at once, sometimes they hire them sequentially. And um, what you what they do then is that there's a, uh, the Writers Guild insists that everyone who works on a script <laughs> puts their name on the front page. So when as a script comes on, you can see when you get a script to rewrite or something, you can see everybody who's worked on it before. Um, at the end of that process, that script with all those names is um, submitted to the guild with the producer's recommendation for who um, should actually get the credit of all those people. Because here's the thing. Sometimes, uh, basically, an entire script is thrown out in the new draft. Very often, massive changes um, are made to the point that there's literally no script left from the original. Um, so the Writers Guild has a set of rules about what constitutes worth getting credit. You have to have written a certain percentage of new stuff. You have to have changed characters, which frankly is writers try and game the system. So they do things like change character names for no reason, because it's like, oh, look, I changed the character. Now he's called Murray. Um, uh, directors notoriously... Um, are kept out of, of the, they, the you, there's a higher bar for a director to get credit um, because directors are always, and producers are always trying to take credit um, or were, I don't know if they always still are, but the Writers Guild made it so that if you are a director, you have to write even more of the script in order to get credit um, as a way of defending against directors putting their name on something. Like they'll suggest a scene and then they're like, hey, put my name on the script. Um, anyway, the Writers Guild has a whole manual of what constitutes worth credit. If um, everyone involved agrees with the productions, the producing company's recommendation on this is who should get credit, uh, then they just usually just do it. But if anybody disagrees, they get three writers from the guild. They ask for volunteers and they say, will you read all the different drafts and then vote on what the credits are going to be? Um, and that can be a lot. You can be reading like 10 drafts. Um, and so, uh, plus, sometimes, some, really, sometimes there are 15, 20 writers on something. Um, on Fracture, there were six. And uh, so what happens is that vote is... Uh, they, they ask for everybody to write a statement saying, this is what I did on the production. Um, the original writer almost always gets some form of credit. Uh, in this case, Dan Pine wrote the original script along with the producer's uh, input. And so he got a... If you're the original writer and they throw out every word of your script, you still get what they call a story by credit. Uh, they'll say like, story by Dan Pine, script by Glenn Gers. In our case, because a lot of the story from Dan Pine's script stayed in my version, 
he got to sh he got shared credit with me, even though by the time we got through, most of the dialogue was mine. Most of the structure was mine. Um, most of what happened after the initial first act of that script was not in Dan Pine's script. Um, sometimes it wasn't in my script. I'm going to do a live stream where I talk about the, the behind the script of a lot of my work, um, and I will do a full story of how Fracture happened. Um, but the answer is uh, the Writers Guild assigns those credits. There's a very strict set of rules, uh, but when it really comes down to it, it's voted by three, a panel of three Writers Guild writers. Um, and if you get two out of the three, you win. So that's the main story. There's more about credit, but the Writers Guild will explain it. On their website, they explain a lot of it. And there's many stories. Um, I know people who have unfairly lost credit. I know uh, directors, I know some really good writer-directors who came in on a project, and because they were director, they didn't get credit, even though they honestly did write well more than 50% of the script. Uh, it's it's not a perfect uh, system, and they are changing it. They are, oh, this is amazing. I so wish this had happened when I was working. Um, they, it used to be that they would only have one or two writers on the on the credits, so, and then they started to have three or four. But the truth is, sometimes there's 10, 15. They now are doing a special credit, which is uh, at the, in the end credits, there will be something that's along the line of additional writing services or something. And everyone who worked on the script, even if every word of your script got thrown out, you still get credit because that really is important in these days of IMDb. There's scripts out there that I worked on that I don't have my name on because other people got wrote, wrote it after me and they got more credit. Um, so anyway, that's a new thing. It's great. The reason that this matters is the money. <laughs> The money that you get after the film is released called residuals, which is a certain percentage of the box office and the sales, a very small percentage, I got to tell you, it's we're talking like, you know, three cents uh, out of like a $20 ticket um, goes to the writer, but only to the credited writers, not to every writer who worked on it. Okay. Um, is that true of TV shows as well? No. TV shows work slightly differently. Similarly, um, there is a whole pattern of um, who gets credit for what, and it is decided uh, in the room by the showrunner um, before it gets submitted to the, the Writers Guild. Um, thanks. So no, it wasn't like we were writing at the same time. No, I'm going to tell the whole story because it's a long story. Uh, but what happened is uh, a producer... And came up with this basic idea for the story. I went to Dan. Dan, who I've never met, he won't talk to me. Uh, he uh, he wrote a draft. It was really cool, but it was very different from what the company wanted. So they hired another guy after him to do a rewrite. It had some things were good. I came in after them. Then I uh, quit. And then some more people came on after me. Three more really good writers, by the way. Um, and then I was hired back again. So it's it's a long story. Uh, but the answer is um, that no, uh, the, I wasn't writing at the same time as any of these people. We were we were one after the other, um, and that's often the case. It's very rare that you have two people writing at the same time who are not a writing team. Um, and the way you can tell a writing team is the ampersand that sign it looks like an and sign. Um, it, it is an and sign. Uh, but the point is, in the credits, if it says so and so and with the word and. That means they did not write together. If it says so and so ampersand and so and so, that means they're a writing team. Little little things uh, that honestly don't worry too much about. Um, hey, I am so sorry that you barely caught it because I am I am signing off now. But I'm thrilled that you're here. Thank you for trying it. Watch the rest uh, on on playback. Uh, welcome. Muhammad Khaled. Um, I hope I pronounce... Uh, it goes for saying with everybody, I really hope I pronounce your names correctly. Um, do your best to, to instruct me if, you, if I'm getting it wrong. 
Um, yes, the new it's it is way more fair. I have a lot to say about that that rule and the credits, um, but but now is not the time or the place. Um, but uh, just thank goodness. I, I I twenty years uh, I was saying this is ridiculous. We've got every single driver and every single assistant to the assistant to the caterer is listed in the credits, but not people who wrote whole drafts. That was crazy talk. Um, part of it was it because. Uh, the money fighting, but they figured out a way to separate that. And the other reason is because the Writers Guild for a long time was afraid that it looked bad to have a lot of writers on a project. Um, I don't see why it looked bad, because it was true, but they wanted the image of the author, of, of the credited writer being the, you know. And so that was uh, that was why, one of the main reasons. People were like, we can't have people seeing that there were, because honestly, on a lot of these big movies, we're talking 30 writers, you know, working on bits and pieces at the time, not rewriting the whole thing, um, famously. So anyway, as Maria said, uh, smash the like button. That's fun. Yeah. Uh, the main thing is, Go write something, and I will see you tomorrow, and we will do more of this, okay? Go write something.